Hey guys, welcome back to I Will Wander. True to the pattern, this morning I woke up, did my usual online activity, work maintaining a few properties and the like, and decided, true to pattern, uh, that I would go on a little bit of a drive. And I ended up here in beautiful Revelstoke, British Columbia. And I found this incredible spot. There's my little red Betty car right there. Still snow on the mountains, as you can see. This is Lake Revelstoke. We're gonna do a little bit of fishing, not too much, a few casts. And then I'm gonna carry on up the road. But the main highway 23 is right there. And I look down and I see this sort of side road and then the area where I'm standing. And I thought, okay, well, I'll go check that out. But it's what we call a recreation site, walking through bugs. Um, so we call a recreation site here in British Columbia. So I wasn't holding my breath that, lovely camera cutting out again. I wasn't holding my breath that um, this spot would be free or empty, which is what I'm looking for. But it in fact is completely empty for now anyway, on a Saturday. So here I am enjoying this incredible spot. I've got, I'll get out of the direct sun, the camp thing set up, campfire thing set up, bench, lake, <coughs> excuse me, and then down here, um, access to the water, which will do a little stroll. We go down here. We go in with the logs a little bit. Yeah, you're picking this up. There's logs here. Go with the logs a little bit. I like this old growth looking stuff right here. And then we go with the logs a little bit further just to see what's what's here, and look how clear that water is. I walked into a huge, oh look there's a place where they're set up to go swimming there. Look at this incredibly clear water. Out here at Lake Revelstoke, on a whim, as usual. Gonna get a couple casts in as mentioned, and carry on up the road and see how far we get. Yeah, as I've mentioned on a number of occasions, Revelstoke sucks. You probably want to stay away from this place. Not much really on offer here for most people. Don't come here. There's a bit of natural beauty, I guess. You've got mountains and your lakes and fresh air. I never really delve too deep on this channel or with anyone really, generally, on uh, into how I'm doing, how I'm feeling, essentially. Um, And I will admit, uh, that today I'm missing some people. There have been, you get old enough and you lose at least a few in my history. Um, there have been a few sudden silly losses. Just completely unnecessary. The loss of these people. And they were wonderful folks. There's a few of them. Um, and today, if I'm going to truly reveal how I'm feeling, I miss a few people today. <laughs> Camera cuts out. 
camera cuts out just as I'm expe uh, revealing my soul. Some tragic losses of late, and um, I'm looking at some of the most incredibly beautiful scenery on this earth today. It's part of the reason why I came here is to get some of the scenery in, and you can't help but think that the people that are gone would probably really appreciate the views and how silly it is that depending on the circumstances of their death there are multiple in my case how silly it is that they're not around to be I'm trying to reveal my soul camera keeps cutting out um it it, it just strikes you Sometimes when you're looking at beauty, like what I'm looking at today, that it's just <clears throat> incredibly sad and silly that uh, these people that have left us, and I'm sure many of you watching this have a few of them, at least one of them anyway, um, can't be around to enjoy the view that you're enjoying. So, oddly, proximity to death actually oftentimes makes you feel more alive. At least I, I do today. I'm present. Hey, there's a butterfly going by. Are you kidding me? I wonder if it's the same guy. I didn't see the, the dots on his wings. He was moving too quick. But um, yeah, I, uh, I feel very alive back here. And fortunate to be where I am and, and able to enjoy it as much as I do the way I do. So that's the big reveal for today. I'll tell you a little bit more about why that's coming out right now. Um, probably. I, I never really know. But I probably, I think I will. I think I will uh, start showing a little bit of my true self here. Can't hurt. Right? So... As I was saying, I have the intention, as I enjoy this awe-inspiring scenery back by Lake Revelstoke, I have the intention of revealing more of myself on here, and also allowing myself to feel more. And I'll go into a little bit what that's all about. So, someone, uh, I, this is delicate, I don't, under, I don't under any circumstances want to give the impression that I'm discussing this in an effort to elicit views on my YouTube channel. That's not what this is about. It's um, a cautionary tale. There's little red Betty there behind me. A cautionary tale, also inspiring in some ways. I lost someone... I lost someone very, very dear to me recently to a fentanyl overdose. So if you're thinking about using cocaine, maybe pass for the next little while. It's about a 50-50 thing uh, in this part of the world that uh, you're going to overdose. And that's not a fun night. This happened to someone I'm close to. And it was fatal, as it, it is with fentanyl. You die from it. Um, and like almost any life circumstance, there are, there are positives to it, um, including the circumstance. I had what could be described as a, a ghost experience. The night this individual died, I sensed a presence at the end of my bed and uh, allowed myself to uh, become aware, if you will. And I asked the person, what are you doing here? And he said, um, I'm dead. And I said, pardon the language, our YouTube, let this go, okay. I said, you fucking better not be dead. This is how I engaged the ghost standing at the end of my bed. Uh, and he said, I am. And I said, well, what happened? And he said, I, I did a drug and it killed me. Um... 
And I asked, well, where are you? And he said, my body is in a, a hotel room right now. Uh, but that doesn't matter, is what he said. Um, and then next thing he says um, is, this is taking a lot of effort to do what I'm doing right now. So please don't interrupt me. And so, you know, you're not going to interrupt the ghost when he asks you not to interrupt him, I guess. I haven't had a lot of experience with this stuff. but um, So I keep quiet for a second and just look at him. And he says, Pat, you have to let yourself feel again. And I look at him, what the fuck are you talking about? And he says, no, I'm serious. Listen, you have to, you've been a zombie since, and then he refers to another life circumstance um, involving sudden loss. And he says, you, you haven't felt anything since then. And he says, you have to let yourself, you have to allow yourself to feel again. Um, and the reality of the circumstance, the fact that I had lost this dear, dear person to me so stupidly, so fucking stupid, fentanyl overdosing, come on, man, um, that I got extremely angry and uh, yelled loudly, uh, a profanity-laced uh, circumstance at this ghost standing at the end of my bed. And the individual um, smirks a little bit, and his, I could tell his eyes were smiling, he goes, yeah, like that, and boom, he was gone. So, uh, so while dealing with this just asinine tragedy, um, it's like epic tragedy here, I have processed what you could call it his ghost. It could be synaptic activity on my part. I'm coping, whatever. But the timing was exactly when he was leaving. I had this... Uh, circumstance. Just after um, I had this engagement with this with this apparent ghost, whatever it was, um, I came almost fully awake and I had tears in my eyes, but I just thought it was some weird sleep thing. And I let myself slip back into deep slumber. Uh, and not all that much long, uh, not all, all, can't speak, take two. Not all that much later, uh, I was talking to a family member and she informed me that this individual had passed. There's a car, just a second. And what this apparent apparition, ghost, whatever you call it, I don't know, I don't have a lot of experience with stuff, was saying was actually uh, quite true. Um, there's been an almost sociopathic indifference on my part to most things of late, uh, and for very good reason. So, uh, I will for my benefit, but also at the suggestion of this deceased loved one, allow myself to embrace emotional depth much more. Um, I think I have some of this. No, we're good. Much more than I have been doing for quite a while now. Um, I'm going to, as I discussed with my deceased loved one's ghost, I'm going to allow myself to feel more. Just let it happen. It's not an easy ride, depending on your journey. Um, and with that, I just want to, look at those old growth. So beautiful. With that, I'm going to <clears throat> not only allow the emotions, because you can control these things to an extent. Um, I'm going to express them more to uh, the people that I'm engaging, good and bad. I'm going to be more emotionally available and demonstrative, I guess. So yeah, that's a um, little insight into what's been going on with me of late. And when I am exposed to Canadiana gorgeousness like this, this is Canada, by the way, it's where I live, it's my country, it's called Canada, British Columbia. My country is British Columbia, but I live in Canada. That's complicated. Um, 
and I'm looking at stuff like this and experiencing this lake. I'm going to go around a little bit and do a little fishing and then go back. I'm going to go back and eat a really nice meal in Revelstoke for almost nothing. i um, thinking Mexican tonight. But I fully acknowledge and am grateful for how fortunate I am. Not just to live here. I know I'm, I'm very fortunate to have in my life. And that's not just this, you know, absolutely breathtaking scenery in this hot little Yaris. Check that thing out. You wouldn't believe what I paid for that. You would not believe what I got that for. Anyway, so enough with the soul revelations. That's what's been going on. I'm going to, as I discussed with my supernatural associate there, um, feel more and express more of that. Now, let's get back to the light viewing of I Will Wander. Thank you.